This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Choices. How do you make the right choices in life? It doesn't matter if you're at home or in the office or if it's personal or if it's family or friends. You have to make choices in those matters. And making the right choice is probably one of the most critical things that you can do in those situations. Now, if we take a look at what the Bible has to say about making choices, all of a sudden it opens up an, an amazing amount of truth and some amazing principles. And I want you to see some of these things today as we take a look at how to make choices extraordinary, how to make the right choices in your life. Why is this important? One of the unique factors of how God programmed us when he created us was that he gave us the responsibility of choice. Now notice that wording. He gave us the responsibility of choice. Obviously some choices are more critical than others, but we still have to make choices. We, we still have this ability to make choices that affect our life and sometimes affect our life long term and sometimes forever. Have you ever played solitaire? Uh, for those of you who are married, you've played a lot of solitaire, and uh, you know what I'm talking about. When you play solitaire, the, sometimes the choices that you make at the very beginning of the game completely affect how the game turns out. The early choices that you make in that game make a decision toward the outcome of the game, and sometimes those choices are more important than the choices that you make toward the end of the game. Well, likewise, the choices that you make in life have some far, far-reaching consequences. If you could look at your life and graph it out and go back and change some of the choices that you made, what changes would you have made? <laughs> I know what some of you are thinking and you should stop that now. But there are some choices that you made in life that just affected your life up to now and will affect your life for years to come. You made choices that made an impact on your life. Did you make the right choice? In 1970, I made a, a decision to try uh, William Jewell College in Liberty, Missouri. I say try because I had spent two pathetic years at two different colleges in South Carolina. And uh, I didn't do well in those, in those years. I, uh, as a matter of fact, I had squandered a music scholarship in, uh, at Fermi University and then a, a debate scholarship at Anderson. And I had actually dropped out of college and was working in professional theater at the time. And I decided that I would go back to William, I would go to William Jewell for two reasons. Number one, it was my parents' alma mater, and they had been encouraging me, oh, you should go there, you should go there, you should go. I had never even been in this area before uh, and didn't know anything about it, but I thought, well, whatever. And they offered me a scholarship, uh, not on grades, mind you, uh, but they offered me a scholarship because my parents were missionaries to Honduras. It was up while I was at William Jewell that I came to know the Lord, even though I'd grown up in a Christian home. And it, but it was there that I discovered the reality of what it means to have a faith in the Lord. And my newfound faith really led me to some radical opportunities to share my faith. Really, all it just seemed like it was all around the world. And I was I, I found these opportunities to speak at some conferences around the country and. I went back to Honduras for part of the summer to share my faith with some friends of mine that I'd grown up with who had gotten into the drug culture, and I felt they needed to hear the truth of this faith that had radically changed my life. When I came back for the next year of college, I went to hear a friend of mine who was preaching at Liberty Manor Baptist Church, a friend by the name of Jay Piper, who's since gone on to be with the Lord. But Jay was preaching at Liberty Manor Baptist Church, and so I went to hear him preach, and that Sunday morning I laid eyes on this stunningly beautiful woman. And I asked a friend of mine who happened to be a member of that church for her phone number, and he gave it to me, and I called her the next night, and we went out on a date that evening. And uh, I married Marcia Hayes less than a year later. She couldn't resist. <laughs> and so, this year we will celebrate our 40th wedding anniversary. made the right choice. Marcia, not so much, but I made 
the right choice. And it all began with a choice in my life. It all, did she just amen me? No. Oh. <laughs> and it all began with a choice to move beyond my failure at these two previous colleges uh, in a completely different state and go to this new college and as I look back on it, I realized that it was the mere mercy and grace of God that led me. I wasn't even a Christian when I made that decision. It was just something that God led me, even though I didn't know what he was doing at the time. And I began to learn a few things after I, after I became a Christian. I began to really get into the word and I began to study about the practicality of the word. And I made this, this deal with God. I said, God, I want to learn this, but I don't want to learn theory. I want to learn what really, really works. I'd grown up in a Christian home. I'd known the theory. I'd known what the church taught. You know, it was all my life. It was all about the church and, you know, doing this and doing that and being this and don't do that and all of these other things. And I didn't want to live my life that way. I wanted the reality of, of my faith. And so I began to really get into the Word. And one of the things that I began to discover was about choices, making choices. The choices you make can be so incredibly critical. So how can you... Make choices that affect your life positively. How can you know that you're making the right choices in your life? Choices have consequences. There's no question about that. Consequences can, can be overwhelmingly good or overwhelmingly bad. And if you make the wrong choices, they lead to bad consequences. Look at what happened to something that was displayed, explained in the Word. In Exodus chapter 34, beginning with verse 16. And when you choose, this was speaking to the parents, and when you choose some of their daughters as wives for your sons, and those daughters prostitute themselves to their gods, they will lead your sons to do the same. Bad choice, in other words. Because bad choices lead to some really bad consequences. And when you make bad choices, you have bad consequences. When you make good choices, you're going to see good consequences. So, how do you make bad choices, as if you didn't know? It's interesting that we see what the Word teaches about the, the dangers of making some bad choices. And I want us to take a look at some of these uh, things on how we make bad choices. The first way that we make bad choices is that we make choices without God's guidance. Well, that's a no-brainer, but it's true. It's so incredibly important to make sure that when we make choices, that we make choices with God's guidance. But to make a bad choice, just don't follow God's guidance. Proverbs 1, verse 28 and 29 says, Then they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look to me, but I will not find me, since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. When you make a choice in life, but you're not really listening for God's leading for that choice, you're destined for a bad consequence. Making a choice without God's guidance. But now look what God has to say about this. This is basically the other side. Proverbs 8, verses 10 and 11. Choose my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather, uh, rather than choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies and nothing you desire can compare with her.